It's time for our monthly reminder that DC Comics are essentially a dumpster fire right now. I know a lot of people are like, oh, Wes is so happy that DC Comics are, aren't doing well, or he likes to spin it that way because he must not like comic books. I'll tell you this right now. Nothing could actually be further from the truth. I am a DC Comics guy. I wish DC Comics was selling like Game Busters. I wish DC Comics was out selling Marvel because the quality across the line was absolutely amazing. And interest in DC Comics characters and their product was as hot as ever. That's just not the case. And I can't sugarcoat something just because I have a personal invested interest in the product. I have to be completely honest about what's happening. DC Comics are in a terrible state right now. We're going to do the March top 50 list, both units and dollars, because apparently I won't talk about the dollars. Okay, we'll look at that. I can extrapolate some information and do some analysis on that as well. We'll go over both of those lists. And then at the end, after that, I'm going to talk about Jim Lee and the challenges that he's facing right now. I got a few rumors that I'm going to get into about people defecting from DC Comics. Some have already happened. Some of them are going to happen in the very near future. First up for unit sales of the top 50, 35 were Marvel for a 70% share. For DC Comics, there were only 9 of 50, 18%. That is unchanged from last month. But at the end of 2021, that number was upwards of more like 13 or 15 per month. So that number has been dropping steadily. And on the indie scene, there are six comics in the top 50 for 12% share. I believe there were nine last month for the indie comics. So that number came down a little bit. Obviously, those numbers filled in with Marvel Comics. There's only one non-Batman title of the nine for DC Comics that are in the top 50 sales in this chart. That is Nice House on the Lake. Sure would be nice to have Vertigo Comics right about now. Genre comics are actually really hot. Not everybody's buying and reading superhero comics. There's a lot of other genres out there that are in play. DC Comics used to be the home. If you talked about the big two, four comics like that with their Vertigo line, that was absolutely destroyed by A.D. Corey about three or four years ago. Obviously, you can't totally blame that on Jim Lee himself, although he would have been part of the decision-making team that put Andy Corey in charge of Vertigo and essentially destroyed the line. You can see that Detective Comics is losing steam due to Shadows of the Bat. The story sucked. It never should have been a weekly pseudo-event for 12 weeks straight in Detective Comics. This should have been a three- or four-issue story that came out in Detective Comics as normal. They decided to blow it out and essentially exposed Mariko Tamaki for what she is but an okay comic writer that isn't talented enough for this type of high profile project. And you can see the numbers for detective comics are trending down. And I think there's a good chance within the next three or four months, you won't see detective comics inside the top 50 until they replace the writer. And that would be a huge loss for DC comics. But I think people are losing faith in the title, especially after that absolutely dreadful shadows of the bat weekly event. Another thing that's happened to DC comics, they don't really have any big names right now. James Tynan is still doing limited work at DC, Nice House on the Lake, obviously, going to be working in the same man universe, not really doing any superhero comics. He's taken all of his work over to Substack. He's also got his books with uh, Boom and stuff like that. I believe he has one at Image as well. So he's essentially left and is doing a couple of very small genre books, which don't really have a place in DC comics right now. You've also got Scott Snyder. What's he doing at DC comics? Essentially nothing. He essentially took his ball and went home. He's over there doing the Comixology exclusives, and he's doing Substack as well. Jeff Johns would have been a big name creator, a creator synonymous with DC Comics. He's got his own imprint over at Image Comics right now. He's doing Flashpoint Beyond. Haven't really heard anything else. We know that there's also been a lot of artists that are associated with DC Comics that have left, although DC has done a much better job replacing them than they have the writers. But there's really no big writers over at DC Comics. There's a huge dearth of actual talent to actually write the products and get them out there. Joshua Williamson can't do everything, shockingly, even though he's trying to right now. Now let's go look at the top 50 sales numbers by dollars, and we'll see a higher percentage of DC Comics in here. Marvel has 33 of those 50 titles for a 66% market share. DC has 13 for a 26% market share, and Indie Comics have four for 8%. It's not surprising that DC has more comics in here than they have on the other list. Because as I mentioned in some prior analysis, DC Comics are absolutely fleecing their customers by upselling and up-pricing all of their big-name comic titles. A lot of them associated with Batman, which is pretty much 50% of their entire lineup of comics are starring Batman, have Batman in a team book, or are starring a Batman-related character like Joker or Nightwing, something like that. That has been an enormous problem for DC Comics, and 26% of the market here isn't actually a good number. It should be more like 30 to 35%. 
And typically, if we looked at these numbers about two years ago, DC Comics always performed better in the top 50 than they did with their total market share, which is always about 30 to 35%. They would normally have more like 35 to 40% of the market share on the top 50 sales. But now they're down here hovering around 26%. This does not look good. There's a retailer out there that I'm friends with. His name's Larry from Larry's Comics. He has been arguing with me about these numbers for a very long time. He said his sub numbers are true to DC Comics and his sales have remained steady, which I imagine they have. He decided to take a show on the road, went to Big Apple Cod in New York City, set up his booth. Guess what the sales were? 80% Marvel, 15% Indie, and 5% DC. He said the DC Comics line is dead to the public. And I guarantee you, Larry from Larry's Comics did not want to have to say that or realize just how poor DC Comics are doing out there. I'm sure a couple of you have noticed two of the titles that jumped in there at the bottom of the dollar sales list. And these portend big problems for DC Comics future. First up, trial the Amazon's number one, a big Wonder Woman event. How is it that Marvel Comics can sell so many issues of Strange number one starring Clea Strange, but DC Comics can't sell the first Wonder Woman event in like 20 years? I wonder if it had something to do that there's six writers credited for writing the damn book and not one of them is a named talent. Not one of them drives sales in the store based on their writing talent. There's one that has a name that can sell comics based on their artistic talent, Joelle Jones. And if you looked at Trial the Amazon's Wonder Girl number one. It was a beautifully illustrated comic. It wasn't very good writing, but it looked great. There's nobody on the book to drive sales because DC Comics doesn't have enough talent to do an event like that right now. They just can't manage it. What are they going to do? Put Mariko Tamaki on there who already failed on Wonder Woman? What are they going to do? Take one of their big name talents that's actually writing Batman, the comic books that are selling right now, and put them on Wonder Woman? Of course not. There's nobody to put there right now. They have no talent. Another comic book that shows up at the very bottom of this top 50 sales is Shadow War Alpha number one. This is a problem. This is a Batman, Robin, Deathstroke crossover story. This should be a big deal. Batman is still selling at DC Comics. Why didn't this comic book crack the top 50 for units sold? Could it be the $6 price tag that made stores and customers apprehensive to get in on the event? Or could it be the fact that we just came off of Fear State Batman and Detective Comics Shadows of the Bat, two Batman events that essentially were coming out for the previous five or six months straight. How about no more Batman events for a while? You might have worn out the character's welcome. Yes, he's still selling, but you couldn't even sell Shadow War Alpha number one. That's a comic book that should have a lot of interest and that should be generating and driving a lot of sales despite that $6 cover price. DC Comics are in a lot of trouble right now. This is Jim Lee's time to stand up and show that he's a good leader. Dan Didio's been gone for well over a year now. They put Daniel Cherry III in place to help him out as the general manager of DC Comics. He's quit. He's working for Kanye now. They brought in somebody else that has no experience as far as creative on comic books. It's his show. They brought in two EICs to back him up, Michelle Wells, Marie Javins. Michelle Wells was fired months and months ago. It's been Jim Lee and Marie Javins essentially running the show and probably doing a vast majority of the creative that isn't working right now. There's no Bob Harris anymore. There's no Bobby Chase and countless other executives with decades of comic book experience that were show the door within the last 18 months. This is all on Jim Lee now. We do know that they are making some changes. Ben Abernathy, who was the Batman group editor, was recently promoted to an executive editor position at DC Comics. But from what I hear, that's not the only change that's happened at DC Comics. What I'm told is weeks ago, and I'm, I don't know how this hasn't gotten out, that Marie Javins herself, the EIC, has been fired. That will be three EICs, essentially, that DC Comics have fired within the span of like 18 months. Bob Harris, Michelle Wells, Marie Javins. What the hell's going on at DC Comics? Tell me that it's, it's a good place to be right now. Tell me they're in a good spot. I've also heard rumors, and these are from pretty reliable sources, that at least two big-name creators that are working at DC right now that have comic books that are selling very well will not be working at DC Comics past this year. There have been so many problems. And we've heard the rumors that we have big-name creators, like even a Jeff Johns at one point couldn't get an email return 
on a pitch that he had, an idea to sell comic books for DC. They wouldn't even look at the pitch, apparently. People are walking away. Talented people are walking away in droves from DC Comics. Longtime editors have left on their own volition looking for new opportunities because something is wrong at DC Comics. This has nothing to do with the Discovery Warner Media merger. This has nothing to do with DC moving to temporary office spaces. I'm told DC is a complete and utter disaster right now. The leadership, the organization, everything is breaking. And it shows in the sales and the interest in DC Comics right now. They have a leadership problem. There is a vacuum of leadership. There is no leadership. We do know that the Discovery merger is happening, and hopefully they take a look at DC Comics and they implement some change to deal with it. But I hate to break it to you. When they do this merger, DC Comics isn't going to be at the top of the list because it's not a big revenue generator. You know, it's going to be HBO Max. It's going to be the movie studios and things of that nature that generate lots of interest and lots and lots of dollars for the company that are going to get looked at first and optimized. DC Comics is going to be at the back of the list. They might not get looked at, really looked at, for another 12 to 18 months after the Discovery DC merger. By that point, DC Comics could be dead. I have not been on the DC Comics is dying bandwagon, but all indications are right now that there's something fundamentally wrong at DC Comics. There's something rotten at the core. And if they don't get it fixed soon, and I mean real soon, they could be completely irrelevant. And like I said earlier, last week, Jim Lee could be the guy that was in charge of DC Comics when it essentially went away. It's that dire right now. This has been going on for several months. I do want to invite you to go check out my sales analysis from December of 2021. There I was able to go in and really look at the price point that's really screwing up DC Comics right now. Let's just put it this way. DC Comics, their best-selling stuff, is so much more expensive than Marvel, it's not even funny. You're going you're gonna to be shocked when you see these numbers.